In today's video, we'll showcase the exclusive behind-the-scenes video of the movie Arthur the King. Make sure to watch this video to the end as we bring you the exclusive interviews with the cast and crew of the film featuring Mark Wahlberg, Simu Liu, the director, Simon Selen Jones, and others. I will do my very best. I mean, it's. Yeah. No, no, you get it. Oh, not me. Not me, although I would love that. Uh, action! Yes, yes, I understand. I, I just need another week to come up with the rest. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. And then the second thing, like I, I, did, I did it. I think the second one, did, uh, I believe the first one, not the second one. Yeah, yeah. So, but we've got, we've got both. We need to run to the finish. Yeah, I'm going to take a chance of a lifetime. I'm going to take it, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Or is it cheeky? Yeah. Come on. Come yeah, on. Sit. 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 Sit that's way. Sit. Sit. Here, come That's, that's, you have to figure it out when it's working for you. In the script. You think it's best photograph-wise? Uh, photograph-wise, photograph I, I prefer it as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Should I show you? Yeah, sure. So, she's navigating. So she will do this. You will actually go. So she take here.
Well, when I heard, first heard the story of Arthur and Michael, obviously I thought it would make for an amazing movie. I was very excited about the opportunity to uh, play the part of Michael, but then I realized how difficult and challenging it would be physically to make this film because adventure racing is one of the most physically demanding uh, sports in, in the history of sports. So uh, excited and then I realized, well, I'm a little older and I don't know how many more rounds I got left in me, but I was, it was too good an opportunity to pass up, that's for sure. Well, when I first met Michael, uh, he is, 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 was very excited about the idea of us making this film, but also he had very high expectations about what we were going to do to portray him, his team, and his relationship with Arthur in, in an accurate way. Um, but, you know, he was very clear with me that, you know, everything was about racing for him, and he was obsessed with the idea of winning and winning a world championship until he met Arthur, who was probably a guy who was so focused and so committed that you could actually say he was selfish until he met Arthur and was faced with this choice and did one of the most selfless things. When depicting somebody's uh, life story, you know, it's, it's important for us to get it right so we deal with with it in the with the sensitivity and respect that it deserves well again so i play michael in the film and you know he is an older guy who has raced uh for quite some years and never reached the pinnacle in which he hoped and aspired to and so this basically is his last chance uh, at winning a world championship and he'll do anything to achieve that and uh, even if that meant using his own life savings manipulating his team to coming uh and thinking that they would have enough time and the resources to train and prepare for such a, a difficult and demanding race. Um, but he, again, would do anything to win and have the opportunity to win until he meets Arthur and then his entire life changes. How could you not be inspired by such a wonderful story? I think um, such a heartfelt, wonderful, inspiring story. I think um, everybody would hope to have 
and Arthur in their life, and I think it is an opportunity to find that special bond and that special connection with a furry friend like Arthur. So yes, I think this will be one of the most inspiring films in a long time, certainly one of the most inspiring films that I've been a part of. So uh, it's, it's a remarkable story. There's two wonderful races in the movie, but the race to save Arthur is the thing that inspired me the most. Well, when you have a story like Arthur, um, it really is uh, the reason why we attracted so much talent. You know, obviously this is a, this is a, a, a wildly inspiring story and people were all wanting to be a part of it and, and bring it to the big screen. So many people hopefully will find so many different things um, to be inspired by throughout the film. There's many themes that I find inspirational, but you know, um, getting after your dreams is, is something that I hope that people will continue to do. I think, you know, a lot of people, especially in today's environment, get, get a little bit complacent or, you know, don't have the, con you know, the confidence in themselves to go after it. And I think you'd be surprised what you can accomplish if you're willing to do the work. And you never know where well, you'll find somebody or something will change your life and your world forever, and certainly for the better. I saw the, uh, the piece on, uh, eight, on ESPN E60 first, and I just, I thought it was a remarkable story. I know, have a tendency to gravitate towards, you know, true stories and inspirational stories. Uh, although I was obviously quick to point out that it was probably one of the more physical movies that I would end up having to do, but you know, you just kind of suck that up. I'm getting a little old for it, but you kind of suck that up and you just feel like, you know, it, it could be such an impactful story on so many levels. Uh, and certainly when I read the script and I felt like it was much more than just an action movie. It's not really about the race. Um, it's really about the relationships and it's a character piece. So that was what was most appealing to me. Well, the story takes place uh, in and around the World Adventure Racing Championships. Uh, I play Michael Light, who is a guy who's pretty obsessed with having never won the world championships. Uh, here's a guy who's been kind of faced with rejection and doubt throughout his entire, really entire life, certainly his athletic career uh, from high school on. And you know, he is becoming pretty obsessed with uh, the idea of winning this race to the point where he's willing to sacrifice pretty much anybody or anything to win. But then as the race goes on, he kind of sacrifices the race and does a selfless thing for probably one of the more uh, unlikely uh, beings and it's you know this this dog who is kind of you know he kind of saw the dog felt bad for him threw a meatball but not necessarily to feed the dog but kind of just to kind of shoo him away and the dog continued to follow him for hundreds of miles and went on this whole entire journey with him we wanted to really kind of push the envelope but I think uh, you know parents will want their kids to see the movie because of the message behind it you know they had this amazing bond and uh, I love that about, about, I remember when I was watching the doc with my kids and my kids were like, dad, are you gonna do this movie? I said, yeah, and they said, are you gonna be with that dog? I said, well, that or another dog. He goes, can we have that dog? I said, I think Michael would quickly give you one of his kids before he'd give you the, uh, Arthur. Well, I, I just do what I always do, whatever kind of preparation is necessary, but I think, you know, spend a lot of time cycling and I spend a lot of time uh, kayaking, kayak here with Michael, but, I think at the end of the day, for me, it was more about just kind of trying to stay as fit as possible, but then be able to handle all the physical demands of the movie. Simu was fantastic. I mean, he plays Leo. He really responded to the material, and he also had wonderful ideas about how to kind of make the character um, just a lot more uh, interesting. And then, um, you know, he just seemed like he had the toughness and the grit. And, you know, you look at the guy, I mean, he looks like a movie star. You know, so to be able to get somebody who has that much buzz uh, in a part like this and really bring it to the table, uh, it's fantastic. Ali and I had worked together on Lone Survivor and I, I mentioned Ali right away for the role of Chick and I just, I love him, you know, he's, he's fantastic. Natalie is amazing as well. She's absolutely fantastic. Really tough, really sweet, but also, you know what I, we knew the most important thing because, I mean, obviously it's physically demanding and stuff like that, but we wanted people that could really kind of go there and capture the emotional aspects of these characters. When we thought about Simon, you know, we really knew that uh, he's tough, he could get in the weeds, but he also has a fantastic eye. And for him to be able to shoot this and get the scope um, <clears throat> that we wanted to, uh, to have for this movie with the time frame that we had and everything, he's been fantastic. I just bonded with him in a way where, and it happened organically. It was like, in the beginning, they're like, I'll spend time with you, Kai. And I'm like, no, because, you know, we kind of meet and then we connect and then, you know, it just got to happen naturally. And it happened in a big way. So, uh, 
He's very, very special. He would come to my house in the morning and I'd make sure I would have lots of goodies saved for him. He loves hot dogs and, and uh, steak. And Juliet Rylance is fantastic. Alani is great. And Rob Collins did an amazing job. And we really had people who were all kind of here and wanted to be part. When you're making a movie that's a true story, you get people committed to doing it, and it becomes a lot more than what they're trying to get out of the experience as an actor. They're all servicing the big picture and, you know, telling the story and Michael's story uh, and his team, and that it just becomes uh, something different. This is a movie that ultimately is going to be uh, a bit of a ride, but I think ultimately you're going to walk out of the theater feeling fantastic, you know. Uh, I mean, you can't help, you'll definitely shed a tear, and, uh, and but hopefully feel good, and then maybe, you know, adopt a dog, or adopt a pet. The world needs to feel good, and it has something for everyone. It's a family movie, it's a date movie, everyone in the world loves Mark Wahlberg, Simu, and Natalie Emmanuel, the cast is so amazing. My first impression when I first read the script was, holy cow, this is real. Um, I hope Michael Lindnord likes it. Um, who are we gonna get to be the guy? It has to be someone big. And when, when we heard it was Mark Wahlberg, we did cartwheels. And oh my God, the dog has to be from a shelter. Like it has to be a shelter dog because we have to hold true to our message. It can't just be, CGI, it has to, we have to show the world how amazing mutts are, how amazing shelter dogs are, and how profound that relationship is. He looks like a Disney dog, like he looks like a cartoon. He has that Benji quality, he has that like scruffy, tough, but also like you want to cuddle him. And he's so smart, like it's mutts for you. Like those are the smartest dogs in my opinion. So Michael, um, is the leader of this Swedish adventure racing team, and he's, you know, trudging along in the Ecuadorian rainforest. And about halfway through, he comes across the stray dog. And, um, you know, they, they kind of just meet. Um, he doesn't really think anything of it at first, but then as the race goes on, he keeps running into this dog, and, and he, the dog keeps appearing. And eventually, they form a real bond and a relationship. And over the course of that race, they grow closer. It's just such a sweet story of, of man and dog. But it's also this like gritty sports story highlighting one of these, like, you know, I've never heard of this before. I've never heard of the adventure racing thing before, but it, it really sheds a spotlight on just what these people go through um, in, this, in this sport. So Leo's this kind of adventure athlete and also social media influencer. So he's a guy that, you know, really is very conscious of the image that he's putting out in the world. He does very, very well for himself in, in kind of both avenues. He's, you know, a world-class adventure racer, of course, but he's also managing a very strong social media presence. And he, you know, he's got a, a very uh, loyal Instagram following. Leo sometimes sees, I feel like, kind of can take a step back and look at the bigger picture of what an opportunity is. Whereas Michael is sometimes so tunnel vision about, I have to win, this is my race, this is my life. And um, I think it creates just like a really interesting dynamic between the two of them. And I'm excited for people to see the movie, um, to see kind of more about how our characters uh, interact and, and, and play with each other. So when I first read the script, I immediately thought about um, my own dog, Barkley, who had passed away just a little bit over a year ago. And I think that's, you know, it really touched me, and I think that's what um, th that's what the script is going to do, and that's what the story is going to do for so many people. I mean, we all, so many of us have grown up with dogs or had dogs in our life, and um, we can all kind of attest to how much they mean to us and how much we we need them. And um, and I think you know, in this particular story, it, Michael our main character really, really needed the presence of Arthur and, and the two really just kind of find each other and, uh, and complete each other. My training was, was largely dictated by the real Michael Lindnord, who was with us for the entire movie. Um, and, and that honestly was such a valuable asset to have for us because he's not only the guy who wrote the book, but the guy who has been, you know, who has lived and breathed adventure racing for, you know, so much of his life. And he was able to kind of lend his wisdom to us. So I, you know, I feel like I did everything that, that they would have done, now, albeit in a, in a much smaller way. I wasn't, you know, running for 300 kilometers at once. But, you know, he taught us how to, you know, for example, uh, carry our gear with us, 
how to um, reach for our water bottle even in the way that adventure racers reach for our water bottles. You know, it, the Dominican Republic is such a beautiful country to shoot in. And of course, you know, it, it's, it's not hard to, to react to just being in the rainforest. I feel like it's that, you know, it's what the adventure racers are going through as they're running through and seeing the trees and the rain and dealing with the humidity, but also just the, you know, the gorgeous, gorgeous natural wonders of what, you know, what the country has to offer too. But um, yeah, we've had, we've had, you know, days on the water where we've been in kayaks all day. We've, we've had days in the, in the pouring rain with the rain machine and, and the mud and the swamp. And, and it's really, I mean, this, this shoot has really given us all that adventure racing has to offer. So our core adventure racing team is, is a team of four. So first and foremost, we've got Michael, uh, played by, of course, Mark Wahlberg. Um, you know, he, he's been such a generous presence on set. Um, you know, wonderful professional, smart, easy to work with. And, and you know, I, I really admire his instincts. I mean, he's someone who's been doing it for so long and, um, you know, has just so much experience and expertise. And it's, and it's I, I just feel like I'm learning every single day that I'm with it, which has been fantastic. Um, and then you have myself. You have uh, Olivia Baker, who's being played by the amazing Natalie Emanuel. Um, and you have uh, Chicky Chikorotis, who's being played by Ali Silliman. The true star of the movie, I think, is, is Yukai, who plays Arthur, who has just been put through the absolute ringer as far as you know what an actor has to do i mean he's done all his own stunts it's it's really hard to find a stunt double for for yukai um you know he is not at any point like a cgi version of himself it's all yukai and he's got to do everything and and he absolutely kills it you know and it's it's such a joy to be with him on set every day we of course had uh dog actors playing the stray dogs one dog in particular her name's Chopa. Um, she and I just kind of like started hanging out together in between takes and I was, you know, giving her pets and we just kind of started developing a nice connection. Literally by the second day, I had fallen so hopelessly in love with this dog and I, I was like, nope, it's gotta be her. I'm bringing her with me and she's just gonna be my best friend for the rest of my life. I think I watched the ESPN mini doc that everyone did when the story broke and it was, you know, for anyone, that has ever had dogs in their lives. And I was a, I was a dog lover my whole life, so it, it definitely resonated with me. Um, kind of just fell in love with the, with the whole thing. And of course, when um, I learned that they were making a movie about it, I was like, well, no surprise. It's an incredible story. It's inspirational, you know, it's hopeful, and, uh, and it's very, very touching. And so it was, an easy, it was an easy yes for me when I read the script. Not only was the story really, you know, um, moving and, and, and uh, compelling, but also I think just the challenge uh, that it presented for, for the actors was really awesome just to get to go and uh, be a part of the environment and to learn all these, you know, incredible skills and uh, to get to spend time uh, in a special place like the Dominican Republic for, for a few months was, was a really rare opportunity, I can say no. I play uh, Leo, who is just this young, hot-headed adventure racer. Um, Michael and Leo have uh, a really complicated history that you kind of see early on in the movie, where in a previous adventure race, um, things don't really turn out well for them, and they end kind of on really bad uh, terms, but when it's time to start up again and Michael has this idea to, to kind of do one last race, uh, his sponsors actually kind of force Leo on him because Leo's this like uh, adventure racing, like outdoors influencer type of, type of guy. And so Michael very begrudgingly goes to Leo and they have this like very contentious dynamic, but they, they you know, both realize that I think they need each other to, to try to win this race. These are human beings that we play. And so I thought, well, I know a lot of people in LA in the influencer space, I think we all do. And I think one thing that we can all agree is that they're incredibly hardworking and they're incredibly resourceful. And, um, you know, they've learned to be very self-reliant in, in a lot of things. So I tried to focus on that and base Leo's character on like, you know, he's ambitious and he's, you know, he's very good at what he does. All these influencers are 
they're like so many different departments of their own little mini company. You know, they're their own creative directors. They're their own, you know, photographers, graphic designers and everything. So I tried to really just play into that. And, um, and, and also, you know, have Leo be like a formidable physical force so that, you know, um, I, I wanted people to feel like if you had Leo on your team, you, you would feel like, all right, we got a good shot. I think every day was full of lots of memorable uh, moments with Yukai specifically because we could never predict what he would do on any given day. And I mean that in the best possible way. Like, you know, so much of what we do is like planned for us, you know, in the movie making process. We have our marks that we're supposed to go to. We have the words that we're supposed to say. And I think having an energy, an unpredictable force, if you will, like Yukai on set every day really just kept us on our toes and made, um, the whole filmmaking process just spontaneous and fun because you really never knew what you were going to get. But but Yukai, I mean, one thing is for certain, he, Yukai did bring uh, poise and professionalism with him on set every single day. And uh, we were just so happy to to be able to share uh, our, our screen time with him. We're all fighting for something at the end of the day. And Arthur's, you know, fighting for his right to survive and for food, you know, and, and just to, a shelter and, and, and home in a way. But uh, we can see that Michael's been going through a lot of the same things too. These races are so, you know, grueling that you really need all four members of a team to just be so in sync and so unified in their desire to win, right? And so Arthur in the beginning is such an antithesis to that, um, that, you know, uh, a, a lot of the team members, specifically Leo, treat him as like an unwanted presence. Um, but I think eventually, as their bond deepens and as you know our it, it, our relationship with him becomes more like a friendship, I think we start to realize in all the ways that we've all grown and been affected by Arthur. The four members of uh, Team Broadrail were, of course, myself. We have you know Mark, who plays who plays Michael, who's you know our 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 leader and the one that ultimately ends up forging that bond with with Arthur. So we have Natalie Emanuel who plays Olivia, who's kind of the, the rock climbing specialist of the group. She's like a world-class climber. And we have Ali Suleiman who plays uh, Chick or Chick Arotis, who's kind of like the veteran uh, of our team. His specialty is just in navigating and orienteering, which is uh, just critically important for, for these adventure races. One of my favorite parts of prep for any movie is, is getting to train in physical components and to inhabit, you know, different different characters and you know sometimes it's learning 16 different types of martial arts and sometimes it's you know it's it's biking and it's kayaking i think the hardest part of our shoot was really just you know getting the incredible footage that you'll see when you when you watch the film but we really didn't fake any of it you know uh like if we, if there's a shot of us kayaking through mangroves, I mean, that's what we did. The one message that I would love for audiences to take after seeing this film is that, um, you know, it's one thing to choose a puppy from a breeder and then to, you know, raise that puppy, which I think is, is a beautiful thing. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I think there's something incredibly special about um, stumbling upon a friend that you never knew that you needed and um, having both of your lives be uh, so profoundly changed by each other. And I think that's what happens to Arthur and Michael uh, in real life in this movie. Uh, I think when you adopt an animal, um, it's, it's really, you're, you're giving a life to a creature beyond their wildest hopes and dreams, and you're giving that animal the, the loving home and the forever home, hopefully, that, uh, that, that really deep down they've always longed for. And um, nothing could, could be more beautiful than that. Um, so I hope that people who watch this movie will um, will consider if they're considering getting a dog, if someone in their in their friend group or their family is considering uh, getting a dog, uh, first of all, great choice, but uh, consider adopting because you never know. You, you're, not only could you change this animal's life, this animal could change your life so, so profoundly. 
I had the opportunity to uh, train before we start to shoot with the real guy, and it was amazing. Um, uh, Mikael, um, he trained us, he's super, super amazing guy. He trained us like kayaking, uh, biking, uh, running with a pack on, like I was asking him about many, many uh, small details. He was there to help. My name is Ali Suleiman and I'm playing the character of Chick. Chick is um, a champion world uh, seven years and um, he's uh, one of the team that uh, Michael um, uh, chose uh, for uh, the Dominican Republic uh, championship or the world championship in Dominican Republic. When I saw the link and the video uh, about the real guy, Mikael, um, I felt like a lot of emotions started to come out and the story is really strong uh, about a man, about a dog, that he uh, uh, saved him and, and he become like part of his family. And uh, this is something that you don't see every day, that people can really uh, change or switch their target to something else and, and consider it as a win in a different way. So I felt like super attached, especially like um, about the subject itself. We make films if we hope that make some change. We hope that open mind for, um, uh, um, for, for uh, something to think about, to, um, to just like look at at the thing that we are trying to deliver to them in another perspective. When Mikael or Michael show up and raise this idea to join him in his team, so first instinct uh, for these guys is just like, it's like, I'm ready for it, but he knows that he had problem with his knee and he's broken, he can't do it. He can't put himself and put Mikkel in this, uh, in this situation. Michael knew that he's broken, but he insists to have him like, because he's a navigator and he's a good navigator. And in a team, if you have a good navigator, you can win a race. When I heard uh, that Mark Wahlberg is, is uh, is the guy and and he's there and I felt so good and so happy to work with him again and and uh, um, this this opportunity like to work with him because we worked together seven years ago in a Lone Survivor film and I'm so happy to do that again with him because always really uh, great to work with this uh, amazing supportive and and uh, he's always there for you and and. Um, He's a great partner, he's a great actor, and uh, it's joy just to be with him. And the other team uh, members, um, Nathalie, that I first time work with her, and uh, Simon, I feel like there is um, a start to be a, a, a great relationship between us, dynamic, uh, great chemistry together because we find many stories uh, between us. Uh, we build many um, uh, moments uh, to make it real between each and, uh, uh, and different uh, character. And also we had the main character, which is the dog, and all of a sudden appears from nowhere and he become like somehow part of the team. And um, um, the angel, let's call it, of the team that saved them from death. He's really a great actor, I have to say, it, Yokai, uh, the dog who plays uh, our dog in the film. And uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's about like a dog who is wounded, who needs home and he finds a friend and he finds actually family and uh, uh it's it's a fighter dog actually he's a super fighter and survivor and uh for me like um 
to see this determination and the focus to go to see the determination of a dog to chase after what he wants, the target, I think it's it's lesson for life. I love the fact that it was a sort of really exciting, thrilling adventure story that basically gets derailed by a dog. And I think suddenly I, and I hope the audience, and certainly Michael, the lead character, get totally diverted. It starts off as a film about the obsession of winning, and then it suddenly shows you that there are other ways to win. Well, it's about, principally about a man called Michael who is a very successful adventure racer, but not quite as successful as he'd like to be. And he's got to a situation where he thinks that the only way to succeed in life is to be a winner. And so his passion, his obsession, is about winning. And that's sort of almost all that matters to him. And at the start of the movie and at the start of the race, he puts everything he has into it. He sort of gambles everything on coming first. It is a dog movie. Um, and it is about how a dog sort of sees these people, a dog that is basically a homeless, destitute creature who's, you know, very sick and very tired. And this dog ends up having the same sort of qualities that these races have, this sort of determination, this refusal to quit, this sort of tough, mad um, obsession with keeping up and getting to where they need to be. I'm not saying it's easy to film the racing, but it's exciting, it's in very dramatic locations, it's fast, it's dangerous. And it was a question of taking all our cameras up steep hills and just throwing the crew into the situation. Uh, so that's one side of it. But then the relationship between Michael and the dog and between the other characters and the dog, that's a whole different thing. You have to, I think, treat the dog as a, as a character, not as a, oh, it's a dog, it's all different. It has to become an equal character. And it, we have to try and find a way to make it seem like it's feeling things and caring about stuff and relating to people. We literally had to carry everything up. We had three cameras, we had all sorts of equipment. We had to carry everything up a very, very steep hill. And when you go on a zip line, there's, you start at one end and you finish on the other. So to get to the other end, we had to send all the equipment, like you say, across the zip line. All the crew members would put on a helmet and just slide over. Uh, it was insane. He was just joyful to work with. I think he's, he's obviously a huge movie star and everyone knows he's a great actor, but he had this amazing commitment. I think this, I mean, he's very committed anyway, but this seemed like a, a really personal project for him. He's obviously a producer. And when we first talked, you could just tell he was bursting with ideas and he was really emphatic, like I was, about how it's great to make an adventure film with lots of stunts and all that, but you have to connect the two characters together. And if, if you don't do that, you don't really have the movie you want. Yukai, what, a, what an amazing dog. I've, I've worked with animals before, but I've never worked with them on such an intense level. And, you know, I met him early on because he came out a few weeks early. And there was already, there was something really cool about him, you know, and the, the, what you don't want to do with the, when you're working with a dog is just point the camera and say, look left, look right, look up, look down. You have to, you hope you get some real connection. I think one of the great things was he and Mark bonded quite early. It's a dog who is emotional above everything, but also determined and wise and still and, you know, has experienced suffering and being an outcast. And it's a dog who's in search of something as well, a family, a home, a life. Uh, the story is absolutely very, quite faithfully based on his book, his story, where he found Arthur, the dog, um, in Ecuador during an adventure race. And he was our technical advisor and also sometimes our spiritual advisor, in fact. And he's a total sweetheart, but you can just see behind the eyes there's a little bit of steel because, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to get into a race with him because he would just be determined to win it. I just want the audience to sort of embrace and love that sort of new addition to the team and to see how that dog changes all the people around him. It's been thrilling, it's been exhausting, it's been infuriating, but mostly it's been utterly joyful. The most incredible thing about this film, and, it, and it's really the thing that drew me to it, was that the direction of your life can change in an instant. That, that you can be on a path um, and a lot of us just get so sort of narrowly focused on the path that we're on. 
for whatever reason. And, and then something like this can come out of nowhere and change your entire life. And I think that message is so important right now to, for the world and our crew. And I hope people understand that, that animals are as important as people and they can teach us a lot more than we can teach them. And that that relationship for many is the equivalent of or more important than any bond that humans have, the, the, the human animal relationship. So this film came to be, was propelled into existence by the events that actually happened in real life. Um, with Michael Lenord on his race in Ecuador. Um, I believe the year was 2013 or 2014. And, um, and that subsequently became a book, which subsequently became a documentary that was a short documentary that was on ESPN. And we saw the documentary and there's no chance anybody gets through that documentary without crying. And we knew we had to make it into a film. There have been a lot of dog films made. This one, I think, <clears throat> is, is more a movie about a transformation, both for the dog, but primarily for Michael Linord, um, the lead character, uh, the, the the actual person, and also the lead of the of the film, played by Mark Wahlberg. Um, really, the dog and meeting the dog is a catalyst for change in the character. The dog is incredible. Um, our dog, whose real name is Yukai, we found him um, in s early summer. Uh, he, he was one of the dogs that the, the, the trainers have worked with in the past. And he, as you said, looks just like Arthur. Spitting image. Um, we didn't have to zhuzh him up and, and dye his hair. He looks exactly like Arthur. This movie being about, you know, saving an animal, it was, it was really, really important to us. Um, probably the most important thing about the movie was to keep the animal safe in the film. I think We've adopted three or four dogs during the actual course of production. There are dogs everywhere here. They're very much part of this world. And, and, and the people are very friendly towards dogs here, which is great. Um, but we have a, a, few new, um, a few new dogs to take back or to, to make sure they have wonderful lives. When I heard Simon's name suggested um, from Steve Levinson, another producer on the film, and Mark Wahlberg, uh, we... we quickly looked at his work, um, Boardwalk Empire and Ballers and Power, and you know he's done a lot of great stuff. Um, and he's, he was really talented at, at capturing something that feels real and authentic characters. He has incredible energy and he's great, great positive attitude. He's, he's tireless, you know, he's enthusiastic and, uh, and really a great leader um, for the crew. So. We feel blessed that, that he's directing the movie. It was an, an embarrassment of riches um, for us on the casting, um, you know, from um, Ollie Solomon, who's an incredible actor, um, just a brilliant, brilliant performer, really well-trained, and the banter that he has with Mark Wahlberg in the film, the back and forth and that chemistry that the two of them have is great. Then we have Simu Liu, and he's great. Um, he's sort of the antagonist. and needed to be strong enough to stand up to, to Mark Wahlberg. Then we have Natalie Emanuel, who's, who's um, in the movie plays, you know, just a badass. Um, she's really like the, at the top of her game in adventure racing. So Juliet Rylance plays Helena, Mark's wife, and um, she's incredible. She's a classically trained, amazing actor. Um, really kind of, we needed the counterbalance to Mark and someone who was as strong as Mark, a different energy, a different way to approach things. Arthur was such a magical dog, and we're telling the story of not only Mark's character, but the dog. So the dog has got to fulfill the experiences. We're not doing this like some other dog movies did CGI, or um, it was all crafted in the editing room. This is really, in your face, real people in real time. And the dogs have been incredibly great and it's very emotional to be on the set and see what they're doing because they're this is this is um strong strong and it's the whole relationship between mark's character michael and the dog are difference makers juliet rylance i mean comes from the incredible family 
um, where her father won the Oscar with Spielberg on Bridge of Spies, and and um, she plays Mark's wife in the movie, and she's awesome. I feel like this movie is going to be a four quadrant movie. What does that mean? It means it doesn't matter if you're 15 or 70, a woman, a man, a girl, or a boy, doesn't matter your gender, your background, your persuasion, your race. We are having a completely diverse cast and a completely authentic, amazing story to tell. The story for me is a story of, in a really selfish world, um, someone gets a chance to give up being selfish and find selflessness. This is a story of two disparate spirits who have zero chance of coming together, coming together. So this story is about this dog who had zero chance to make it in life. And a guy who is so self-involved that he had zero chance to really move forward or he, all he could do is just keep spinning. And they had a moment that's a Spielbergian magical moment that we will see in the film, which we do not want to ruin, but um, that united them and bonded them and gave them both a greater purpose. So in that sense, that's pretty much the way I feel about the story. Magic. Mark Wahlberg's a phenom. He is a seriously talented actor. He gives it everything. There's no surprise that he's multi-talented and a real businessman and understands uh, his brand. But when he's acting, it's all about the acting. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to make the best version of this movie. And Mark is an incredible leader. You can feel it his presence around all the other actors. I like to think the same with the producers and the whole um, team, <clears throat> our cameraman, everybody else. Well, adventure racing is a world I know pretty well. You know, we hosted a, a big show for Amazon called The World's Toughest Race, which is all about these teams coming together. Uh, and what they go through is always incredible. But I think what stood out about Michael's story is... Uh, I can think of all the hundreds and hundreds of teams I've got, seen going through this sort of thing. I've never known one uh, end up picking up a stray dog and that bond and that friendship being quite as powerful and quite as transformational, I think, for the people uh, than in the case of Michael's. So I think that touched hearts when, it, when people heard about the real story. It touched hearts all around the world because ultimately it says that, you know, something's more important than just winning. And I think that's a, such a strong message for life that ultimately friendships and connection and kindness and sacrifice matter more than, you know, just trophies. And, you know, Michael and his team exemplify that. And I think it's hard to watch this movie and not have a tear in your eye at the end. Yeah, it's a beautiful story. And uh they got so much more out of it than any trophy would ever give them. I think I suppose as a survival guy, I have an understanding of actually how hard it is for these teams when they they take on these sort of races. You know, 435 miles is a huge distance. And when you've got to do it as a team and you're through the sort of terrain and the jungles of Dominican Republic like these guys went through, you know, it's hardcore. Uh, and I think it's even it's easy to underestimate maybe sometimes as a viewer just the physical exhaustion of going that distance, that length of time, through the night often, limited sleep, you know, and you've got to navigate and you've got to look after your team along the way. And, you know, there's a lot happening. And when people are under pressure, you see what they're made of. I think that's what I've I've learned over my life as a survival guy is that when we're squeezed, it's a bit like grapes, you know, you then see what we're made of inside. And this team showed that ultimately it's all about heart. Uh, it's all about kindness. It's all about sacrifice. And uh, and I think how that team finished at the end gave them so much more than any trophy ever could. And I think that's a beating heart of the message of the story is that some things matter more. I think ultimately what resonates is that some things matter more than a trophy. You know, their, their friendships uh, together, 
uh, and the fact that they build this bond that is unbreakable uh, with Arthur. And, you know, sometimes we kind of think we know it all as humans, but actually animals are so smart. They're intuitive and, you know, that love is freely given. And, you know, Arthur saving them from that ravine and that cliff edge. And, you know, I don't know. It's just like a beautiful reminder that uh, that, that bond between humans and animals has been unbreakable through through the years, through millennia. And uh, and we sometimes all need reminding of that. I look at my life and it's one of the strongest, most beautiful things I have in my life is our dogs. And uh, I never underestimate that power. Well, I think one of the mantras I've lived by through so many years, you know, through my job as a soldier, through adventure, uh, through many expeditions and climbing and you name it, has been never give up. You know, ultimately it's the ultimate lesson we can all learn for life for survival for adventure racing is that we're going to hit some storms and we're going to hurt but ultimately the the rewards go to those who are dogged and determined and have that never give up spirit inside and michael's story is that from the beginning you know even from when he was trying to raise sponsorship and funds to be able to you know just enter this team uh his is a story of true never give up. It's a true story of never give up and how they interact with each other when the going gets tough. And ultimately, it's a story of never give up when they're faced with that big dilemma at the end. You know, do they win the race or do they save Arthur and finish with something much more important? Ultimately, you want people to come away with a sense that, uh, you know, some things matter more than winning. Some things matter more than trophies. You know, our friendships, our relationships not only with each other, but also with the natural world. And, and also, of course, with our pets and our animals and, you know, that we meet along the way. And I think that bond with Arthur, the dog for Michael and his team, you know, it's a real story, you know, that they will say that that will never leave them. You know, even though Arthur didn't live long, you know, after this whole thing, I think the memories, uh, what they went through together, that bond is unbreakable. And I think for all of us, a reminder that... Um, the relationships in our life, those special relationships between friends, between our pets, they are they're um, they're the real wealth in our life, really, the real gemstones. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.